So here we are again in 2022, and guess what? We have another form that we have to fill out. Hey, everybody, how you doing? My name is Joe O'Grady. I work with HRP Associates. I'm currently the Chief of Compliance for Plant Services. And today's episode, what we're going to be talking about is the biennial report form. This report needs to be filled out for all hazardous waste that may be collected during the odd number years. And in this case, it would be 2021. So this report only has to go out every other year for large quantity generators. But as you'll see throughout our video, there is some more important pieces that we have to look at even if you're not a large quantity generator. This is for hazardous waste that was produced during the collection year, which would be an odd year for most everybody out there. And as you can see, there's quite a lot to this form. You actually have to list all of your waste that you may have shipped off site. Now, for the most part, this form really only needs to be completed by a large quantity generator. Also too, something else to keep in mind is, is that when you're a small quantity generator or even a conditionally exempt quantity generator, if any time during the calendar year you exceed the 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds of hazardous waste that you have to ship off site, maybe that's due to a tank that you're draining, cleaning, getting rid of product, Maybe you did a whole sweep of your facility and said, wow, we had a lot of hazardous waste sitting around here or waste in general that now we're declaring hazardous waste because we want to remove it. And if it exceeds that 2,200 pounds or that 1,000 kilograms, even if it was in December, the last month of the year, guess what, guys? You've now changed your status for, as generator to a large quantity generator. And once that happens, you have to meet all the conditions that a large quantity generator has to meet, including the biennial report, because it is, once again, the oddity of even years, <laughs> right? So that's the catch all for this one. And it's interesting because a lot of times this report is forgotten about because it is every other year on the even years. So don't distress. This is why HRP is here. We're here to help you guide you through this process. Even if you've never done it, even if you're familiar with it, but need assistance, maybe because you have more things going on than you can handle at the moment, we can step in and take care of this form for you. And we're happy to help at any point. Now let's get into some of the details of the form that you're gonna have to be submitting. Now this form can be submitted like this, paper hard copy, and actually sent into the EPA RECRA or you can actually produce it online electronically. The preferred method is to do it electronically online. HRP is here to help either way. I like to use this form just as my field notes to be able to actually produce what I'm gonna be sending to the EPA and then I transfer it back into the electronic version for accuracy. So in this case here on the form, one of the main things you always have to fill out is your EPA ID number. You have to have an EPA ID number to be able to complete this form. If for some reason you go to say, well, geez, I know we're a large quantity generator, but I can't find my EPA ID number, you need to contact us. We'll be able to help you out and get you that number. Because that's your, your unique identifier that tells uh, the EPA and RECRA who you are as a facility. It actually talks even about your generator status. They're gonna know that you're a large quantity or that you're a small quantity or conditionally exempt. Even if you're a very small quantity generator, you still may have to fill out this form depending on the more details that we talked about earlier. So in this case here, you have to have your EPA ID number. The next piece is really, it's gonna talk about you know who you are what generator status you are. If you're a generator, transporter, receiving facility, some of you may be all three, and that's okay to check that box. It's gonna ask for your physical address of the site. It's gonna ask your state and country. Now this is a great part to just kind of interject for a few seconds here is that um, there is several states that you actually have to produce an annual report. If you're in one of these states that I'm showing here, your reporting is now annual. So as you're filling out the form, you'll notice that there's multiple different places for your site information. Really, you only have to fill out one site information. And what you want to do is, is actually put down everything, including your physical address of your site. Now on the second page of this document, you actually have where you're going to start listing all of your waste. Same thing. 
like I said earlier on, you have to put the EPA ID number on the top of every single form. And the reason for that is, is so your, your information is tracked correctly to your site. Now here you have, again, multiple areas for different waste. So for every waste, you're going to fill out one of these complete boxes. It's going to say, hey, part A, waste description. Part B, EPA hazardous waste codes. Now these codes can be found in the uh, RECRA under 40 CFR 26241. You can actually look up these codes. HRP can also help you with all these codes as well to make sure that they're listed right. You just can't put in the name of what the waste is. You have to use the specific codes that they're asking for. Now you're gonna do this for each one of the wastes you have. You may have to print out several of these pages. That's okay to do. Now if you're filing it electronically, the great part is you're gonna be able to keep putting all of your information in sequentially as you go. That's the way I would recommend, is do it electronically. It's gonna be a lot easier for you at the end of the day. And you know it's been submitted when you're all done. You have a receipt of that. So keep in mind, this form has to be completed by March 1st of this year. That's really important. You do not want to miss that submittal time. Whether it's electronic or mailed in, you make sure that if you're mailing it, that you have it postmarked before the 1st. Um, the other piece is, is that, hey, HRP is here to help. Again, like I've said, whether you're very familiar with this form or you've never filled it out before, we're here to be able to assist you and make that happen easy. So hey, hopefully I've helped you out. This is a lot of information. There's still a lot more details that you're probably gonna be asking yourself about. Well, that's where you can contact us and we can take care of you. Um, remember, if you liked what you've seen, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so we can get back to you. Appreciate it, everybody. Take care.